You're listening to ReachMD, the channel for medical professionals. Welcome to Lifelong Learning, featuring thought leaders in the field of continuing medical education. Lifelong Learning is presented in cooperation with the Alliance for Continuing Education in the Health Professions, the International Association of CME Professionals. Here's your host, Senior Vice President of Educational Strategy for Prova Education, Lawrence Sherman. Today we're talking technology and trends in continuing medical education and how that affects the practicing physician. I'm Lawrence Sherman, your host, and with me today sitting at the Alliance for Continuing Education and Health Professions annual meeting is Dr. Joseph Kim from MCM Education. Hey, Joe, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me here. Oh, I'm glad to have you because you represent something that we really need to to delve into, and that's a, a physician who's trained in medicine, who's now in medical education with a passion and interest in technology. Well, thank you. I mean, I think that right now this is an era where we're seeing so much technology being implemented in hospitals and health systems, largely because of the government's push with the High Tech Act. But I think this is really just a first stage. And, you know, we are seeing the tip of the iceberg of what we're going to, what the future of medicine is going to look like as we get into more data analytics, um, clinical decision support, and guidance on, you know, the use of supercomputers and all these algorithms to really guide clinicians to apply the latest evidence and to reduce patient errors and to really improve outcomes. So it's an exciting time to be in both the medical education space as well as to be following the trends in technology. Well, well, I think that's right, and I think that was sort of the genesis of this interview because, you know, I I think a a lot of the practicing physicians may not realize what we think about and what research we look at when we're developing education and how we can help to implement it when a clinical question arises, maybe even at the point of care. You're absolutely right. I think so many uh, healthcare professionals, they're used to what I'll call the traditional way of looking up information and treating patients. They rely on their memory, and occasionally they may do a search online. And some of them are using these electronic health records that have very basic clinical decision support tools built in that will help them prevent prescribing a drug, for instance, that has an adverse reaction or an allergy or some other warning. But when it comes to really looking at the latest evidence, particularly with uh, updated clinical guidelines or even data that is not reflected in the latest guidelines, and applying that when they're treating a patient... Or, you know, let's even take the example of personalized medicine, looking at the patient's genomic profile, t- factoring in all of their comorbidities and, you know, just certain genomic profile information that we know based on biomarkers. I mean, that is really the future of medicine, and we're on the cutting edge. Some places are doing that. They have access to the information resources, the tools, the technology to treat patients at that level. Uh, while others, you know, look at that as being way too futuristic, but it's really not that far ahead. No, it's not. And I think there's a linkage there between personalized medicine and personalized medical education, right? Because as we've seen through the years, learners are different with different preferences and different markers, if you will. And I think technology may be the way to help deliver education to the learners, to the practicing healthcare professionals, in ways that they may not have realized education could be delivered. It's a great point. You know, I think all of us have probably sat in on lectures and sessions where at least some percentage of the content includes materials that we already know. Well, wouldn't it be great if you could just skip that content that covers things that we already know, and let's just dive right into the gaps, things that we don't know or things that we know incorrectly. And I think you're right that in, in the future, in the near future, that is the way education will be delivered. We're not going to have to review things that we already know, but rather, instead, we're going to get reinforcement on those pieces of data and education on things that we don't know or that we're not doing right. Right, and I think it'll take passive learners and turn them into active learners. Now, we've seen that in undergraduate medical education and graduate medical education, and now it's starting, I think, to extend into the continuing medical education world. Yeah, it, it certainly is, you know, and bringing up uh, undergrad and graduate education, we know right now that the AMA is looking at completely revamping the medical school curriculum, and uh, I'm sure it's going to include a lot of technology, whether it's digital textbooks and more interactive learning and multimedia, all the way to customized learning based on what the students know and don't know. And like you said, it really varies based on the cohort, based on each individual, based on their background. And I think in, in the world of continuing education, what we're finding is that there are also people who know certain things, but they're not necessarily practicing what they know. 
And so then it opens up this whole other door of different barriers and behaviors and intent to change because, yeah, a lot of doctors will admit they know what the guidelines are, but they either don't agree to them or they find it difficult to adhere to them for whatever reason. So I think that's where the world of continuing education is really blending in with quality improvement and performance improvement. And these are terms that are really going to reshape, I think, the world of continuing education to really impact patient outcomes and really that bottom line. I think that's right. And I think we're going to see the evolution of incorporation of maintenance of certification and maintenance of licensure into the, the, the personalized learning that's developed by each practicing physician. It's absolutely true. I find that a number of these medical specialty societies are looking at just going beyond the traditional multiple choice question and the traditional way to assess knowledge and really looking at other ways to measure that level of competency and using technology tools to do it. And, and so I think that's an area where we're going to see a big evolution and continuing uh, change in terms of the, the process of how these specialty boards uh, evaluate their providers. Well, let me uh, take you in a different direction now. So, so with your passion for technology, and I know we share that, and, and your interest and in, in profession in medical education, what predictions might you have for where we're going to see the near-term use of new and innovative technologies in continuing medical education? I think one of the areas, and I don't know exactly how near it is, but certainly in the future, is the use of artificial intelligence with natural language processing and supercomputers and really a cloud-based infrastructure that's able to look at all the existing data out there, analyze it, and then while you're at the point of care treating a patient, just like we've seen IBM's Watson and how it's being used in medical schools and in health systems, in the same kind of way, these supercomputing capabilities all of a sudden gives guidance to the doctor or to the healthcare professional treating that patient. Now, some people have said, is that then going to turn into cookbook medicine? But I don't think that's really the case. I think, if anything, it's going to add this layer, this new dimension of personalized care that no one has ever experienced before because no one has the mental capacity to do what these supercomputers are capable of. And I think that's one of the areas where we're going to start seeing some real innovation. I guess that's the, uh, the evolution of Dr. Google to Dr. Watson. That's one good way to put it, yes. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to ReachMD, the channel for medical professionals. I'm Lawrence Sherman, and I'm speaking with Dr. Joseph Kim from MCM Education. We're here at the Alliance for Continuing Education for Health Professions annual meeting, and we're talking about technology and medical education. Well, Joe, let, let's sort of move into a, an, another place. I want you to put your thinking hat on again, because I, I, that last question was pretty good. Uh, what practical advice do you have for practicing healthcare professionals for incorporating technologies into their own education now? So I think right now more than ever, healthcare professionals are busier than they've ever been before. And as a result, we only have these small pockets of time to either look up information, to learn, to research. And I think what I would encourage every healthcare professional to do is find ways to maximize those few minutes throughout the day. Some people have a routine where in the morning when they're drinking their coffee, they uh, browse through the latest clinical journal. Other people have a routine where they look at certain newsletters via email. I think there are other pockets throughout the day, uh, whether it's between patients, during rounds, um, you know, during mealtimes, where we can really hone in on that key, important, up-to-date, but also most relevant pieces of data that will help that practitioner improve patient care. And I think those opportunities are there. The technology platforms are there to deliver that kind of customized information. And I would encourage everyone, regardless of their level of technology savviness, so to speak, to leverage these resources and to further their knowledge and to just really make sure that they're incorporating the latest data and evidence into their patient care. You, you know, one of the things that, that we've heard talked about here at the conference is the connectivity of education with the learner and connectivity of the learner with things that they've learned, right? So the, the sticky note and the conversion of sticky notes into change, right? So I, I guess technology may well serve uh, a, to some degree to help connect the learners with what they learned and then help them to apply it. You're absolutely right. I mean, we all have grown up, I think, in an era where it was very didactic and traditional, and everyone takes notes differently, and everyone is reminded of that information 
uh, differently as well. But today, the resources are available to leverage automation, particularly to remind us on a weekly or monthly basis, or even three months later, hey, don't forget this key fact that you learned three months ago. And I think those kinds of resources, and particularly on the automation side, are really valuable tools that healthcare professionals can use to reinforce their, their learning. Right. I think we're creating that new educational environment, and, and I guess I'm trying to figure out the best practical advice for, for the practicing folks right now so that they can start to do that. Yeah, I think on, a, on a one practical level, some will say that they're getting inundated with so many emails and so many messages from, be it publishers, medical ed- education providers and such, and as a result, it's hard for them to decipher what is most relevant to them. And there are platforms and tools that will help sort of um, consolidate that information. I think one of the key tools that's uh, organic is crowdsourcing, leveraging your community of healthcare professionals, whether they're in your specialty area, whether they're within your health system, and leveraging their input and their responses and using that crowdsourcing mentality that's really being built off of social media to help identify what are those most relevant pieces of information that I need to know today to be a better healthcare professional, and then making sure that I spend that extra three, five minutes a day to just read those things. I think that is a very practical example. So you're a Generation X physician, I guess, and and I was interested to learn that I'm the first year of Generation X, so it made me feel younger when I heard that. Uh, but what about the baby boomer physicians, uh, where there may be some challenges in incorporating technology into the way they've learned to practice? I think that many of them are being forced to use technology, particularly because of these EHR. So, I mean, more and more doctors are spending time sitting in front of a, a computer screen, if you will. But we also know that there are new uh, form factors, such as the Apple iPad is a very popular example where the navigation is easy, it's easy for people to use, and I think these kinds of tools are, that's exactly what they are. They are tools that facilitate information transfer. And I think that most, even the baby boomer generation, they're out there, they're, they're buying these products, they're using them, and they're learning how to use them more effectively. And I think in the same way, just not being shy, making sure that they ask questions from the younger generation of doctors, and getting suggestions from them. I mean, the younger docs, the younger nurses out there, they're eager to share some suggestions, some tips, some practical uh, tools and suggestions that will really help make life a lot easier for those who are in the older generation. You know, that, that makes me think about the physician as consumer because I think technology is a part of people's lives outside of medicine and medical education, and then it's the ability to implement the use of these same tools that they're using every day anyway into their practice. There's certainly a consumer mentality, and I think it's a matter of understanding that these tools are much more beyond what they may use them for at a basic level. And and we're seeing a huge range of people, for instance, when they buy a new device, how many apps, for instance, are they loading? Or are they purely using it just to browse the web to do some reading and to check on email? And I think those are key examples where, once again, if on a monthly basis, They just simply make it a goal that they're just going to explore one new app, and they'll download that one new app or they'll ask uh, for some suggestions or get some advice, and just for that one month, they'll try something new. I think it's a great way for them to learn and to continue to expand on their professional development. Joe, the the time has flown by. I want to ask you before we end this, is there anything else you'd like to add when you think about technology and medical education from a practical perspective for the practicing healthcare professional? You know, this year, the theme, one of the major themes is around collaborative team-based care, and I believe that technology is a tool that can really help enable that. And so within whatever system you're in, whether you're in outpatient care or in a group practice or in a hospital setting, leveraging technology to facilitate communication within the, among the entire healthcare team, physician, nurse, pharmacist, healthcare educator, diabetes educator, social worker, incorporating all that communication, making sure that nothing falls through the gaps, as well as making sure that that patient is really well cared for. And I think so many of us can really relate because we have loved ones who are patients or who have been patients, and we want to make sure that those patients get the best level of care. Well, the technology tools are there. They're available today. 
to facilitate that kind of more effective collaboration, team-based communication, and really to improve care coordination. And I would encourage everyone who's listening to make sure that they do that and that they encourage everyone on their healthcare team to be on the same page when it comes to these technology tools. Well, I think that was a great way to end it, and it was a great point, Joe. My thanks to our guest, Dr. Joseph Kim from MCM Education. We've been discussing technology and medical education. We're sitting here at the Alliance for Continuing Education in the Health Professions annual meeting. I'm your host, Lawrence Sherman, and join us next time. Be sure to visit our website at reachmd.com, featuring podcasts of this and other series. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to Lifelong Learning on ReachMD, the channel for medical professionals, featuring thought leaders in the field of medical education. Lifelong Learning is presented in cooperation with the Alliance for Continuing Education and the Health Professions, the International Association of CME Professionals.